everyone. It's Sequoia with BE The Code, and we are here with special guest Marlon Nichols of Cross Culture Ventures. Thank you for coming out, Marlon. How are you? What's up? Thanks for having me. I'm great. Yeah. Great. Good, good. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about Cross Culture Ventures and what you guys look for in terms of investing. Cool. So Cross Culture is an early stage venture fund. Um, we typically start at Series Seed and participate through Series A. Sometimes we start at Series A and participate through Series B. Typical or average initial check size is about half a million into the companies we you know, we make bets on. And uh, we are a thematic fund. So our theme is cultural investing. Mm. And basically what that means is we look for cultural shifts, economic shifts and demographic shifts and um, invest along those lines. And we do it on a global basis. Awesome. Yeah. So some of your investments are listener. We had Rodney Williams up here the other day. Character. <laughs> love, love Rodney. Um, I'm actually a, a, an advisor on Infor. Oh, dope. Okay. Yeah. So my last, um, I started out in, I guess I became a professional venture capitalist uh, when I was with Intel Capital. Okay. And that's when I made the investment into Rodney's company. Okay. And um, we just had such a great relationship and I felt like I continued to add value. So mm -hmm. after I left Intel to start Cross Culture, he asked me to stay on the board and, and I did. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. But we have... So we're, our fund is what, um, a year and a half old now? Okay, and so fairly new. Yeah, fairly new. We've got um, 10 investments done um, in that in that period of time. Uh, working on the 11th right now, so knock on wood, we get that done before the new year um, rings in. Okay. But uh, yeah, you know, Maven um, was is, is one of our investments. Mm -hmm. So mobile platform for hairstylists to sell product without inventory risk. Okay. Thrive Market, which is an online grocer. Hinge 2, which is um, in the fashion tech space, helping uh, fashion brands and designers to do what they're good at, which is to create products and okay. then they handle the rest of it without inventory risk again. Um, M Survey, which is based in Nairobi, Kenya. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. That's uh, probably our farthest, our longest distance with, the <laughs> with an entrepreneur. But um, they're doing some really interesting things around... Um, uh, getting the voice of the customer through SMS. Okay. Um, working with uh, telcos and emerging markets. Mm. Um, most recent deal that we did is a company called Reply Yes. Okay. Which is in the um, text commerce space. So basically helping brands to um, create relationships, intimate relationships with uh, um, existing and um, prospective customers. Okay. Understanding their sentiment and then um, being really good at this product discovery and, um, and uh, making it possible to do transactions directly through text with like one one word answers and stuff like that. Okay. Um, I can go on and on. <laughs> <laughs> we love all our companies. So, Perfect. Yeah. And so one of your business partners is Troy Carter. Yeah. Who is yeah. formerly Lady Gaga's manager uh -huh. and has Adam Factory now. Uh -huh. How did the two of you guys get involved? Oh, so uh, when I was, you know, I was still at Intel. And um, I was thinking about, you know, uh, and I was a Kaufman Fellow at the time okay. as well, going, finishing up my fellowship. And um, I was kind of thinking through, all right, what's the, what does the fund look like? Because I definitely wanted to leave Intel and do my own thing. Um, and, you know, started coming up with the concept of cultural investing and all that stuff. And uh, one of the things I did was to seek out advisors. So folks that have been doing investing longer than me mm. um, that and advisors that could become investors. Okay. And so one of those advisors is uh, Frida Kapoor Klein. Okay. Kapoor Capital. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I sat down with her and Mitch and was like, I need you guys to help me out. Help me figure this figure this thing out. You know, are you are you on? Are you in? And they were like, yeah, we're in. And um, but she said, you know, we're going to invest. Um, we're going to back you 100 percent. But we need you to go meet this guy. Oh. And and that was Troy. Okay. And, um, so in like a day's notice, uh, we set up a meeting. His calendar is crazy. So for him to do that was was um, was a it was a positive sign. So flew down to L.A. Okay. Uh, met with him. He was like, Yeah, I'm not investing in your fund. Oh. <laughs> Because I already invest, and I'm, and I'm pretty good at it, right? Like I got Uber, Lyft, Spotify, right. before we parked with all these right. stuff. Like, right. why do I need to invest in your fund? Right. And um, so I was like, all right, you know, we'll stay in touch. We'll, you know, we'll see if we can be helpful to each other. And about a week and a half later, he called back, and he was like, yo, I can't get this out of my head. Uh -huh. um, we should look, we should find a way to do this together. Okay. And so we spent about a year um, with our, our, our other partner, Trevor Thomas, mm -hmm. and um, basically just figured out how we're going to make this work. And um, we developed like a really great partnership. Now we're very close friends. Um, you know, like I said, we launched the fund a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. We're strong. We're looking at future funds. 
Um, so it's been it's been phenomenal. And then the because he owns the Atom Factory, that, right? That gives us a really unique proposition mm-hmm. for entrepreneurs because um, you know what he found early with working with Gaga and John Legend and a bunch of those folks mm-hmm. is that you know what really helps um, create these brands and and, and um, drive successful careers at the early stage is like um, communication strategy, brand strategy, um, business development. And so that's the same exact things that that um, drive success for startups at the early stages. Mm. So now, when we make investments um, in companies, we can deliver those services to them, and they're critical services that mm-hmm. you typically can't get anywhere else. Right, like right. Free. Mm. So, um, so it's a it's a huge value add and value proposition. Okay. Yeah. And so you, like you said, have Maven, you have Listener, you have all these companies. What attracts you to an entrepreneur or a founding team to say, yes, I want to make that investment? Mm-hmm. So we look for for new markets, right? So in other words, uh, challenges that have not yet been been addressed mm. or that, you know, industries that just haven't seen innovation in forever. Okay. Right? Uh, we definitely have an eye on the consumer because that's what, that's what we study. Um, so consumer facing technology is our, is our stay. Um, but in entrepreneurs, you know, it's like, what is it about this thing that you're building that um, has created this passion and this drive in you for it, right? Mm-hmm. And um, what what is that unique story? And then it's like, you know, because entrepreneurship is really hard. Yes. Right? I mean, it's a roller coaster. Yes. And you got to have a certain tenacity, tenacity, fortitude, mm-hmm. like a certain level of scrappiness, and just like hustle. Um, Here, are you gonna eat those ramens or not? <laughs> right, right. Make those 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 hard those really hard decisions. Like, can right. you fire your best friend that you started this company. Right. With? Um, you know, like so. Th- those are the things that that we look for. But in, in addition to that, what is it about your background, um, either professionally or personally, that ties you to this thing? What what's the unique experience that you have that makes you like uniquely qualified to be the person to to create this company and drive it forward? Mm. So th- that's really what we look for. Okay, awesome. At what point did you say, I want to be an investor? I oh. want to go through this Kaufman Fellowship. Yeah, I yeah. want to do yeah. investing yeah, full time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I was um, I was on the path before I came before I became a Kaufman Fellow. Okay. So, um, you know, my career was, first I started out in enterprise software. I was with a soft, was with an early stage um, startup company. I think I was like employee number somewhere between 12 and 15. Okay. And then ultimately I uh, helped grow that company, um, launch it in Europe and sold it to SAP. And then I said, all right, I want to do something different. Okay. Um, this is, I'm getting bored. I can't do the same product day in and day out. Mm. Uh, so I tried consulting. So at first I did, was doing like M&A, um, post M&A uh, consulting. Um, my main client was a Blackstone group. And then I moved into strategy consulting and then I, um, in media and entertainment. So I worked with like Warner Music and Raw Hill and a bunch of folks like that. Okay. And then I said, all right, I'm tired of this too. I'm bored. Um, so I'm going back to business school. Okay. Went back to business school, went to Cornell and um, really started pursuing venture capital. Then I ultimately ran the school's venture fund mm-hmm. the time I was there. So, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So I managed seven other fund managers, which are also um, MBAs and 61 associates. Wow. Um, all over you know, Cornell's campus. And that led into um, an opportunity at Intel Capital. Mm -hmm. And so while I was at Intel Capital, um, I decided to do the Kauffman Fellowship because I knew I wanted, at some point, I wanted to start my own fund and I wanted to build a brand as an investor and the community and the network in um, globally Mm -hmm. uh, uh, from an investor investor perspective and entrepreneurship perspective um, at the Kauffman Fellows program was massive. Okay. So I was like, this is something I have to do. And uh, I was fortunate that they let me in. And then um, <laughs> once I got in, I just, you know, leveraged all the resources, built the relationships, and it led to us launching this firm. So, awesome. Yeah. Okay, we're going to play a game. Uh-oh. Two truths <laughs> and a lie. Two truths and a lie. <laughs> so you get to tell me three facts. Two of them will be true. One will be a lie. Okay. But you're not going to tell me which is which, and I'm going to try to guess which one is the lie. Wow. <laughs> okay. Ready? Uh, yeah. Okay. So while I lived in the UK, I played semi-pro ball for the, the two and a half, three years that I that I was there. That's one. Okay. Um, let's see. I almost got fired at at Intel Capital. I can see that. 
and uh, let's see, three. Um, I almost failed out of my MBA program. I'm gonna go with the pro ball is the lie. And that was true. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah that was true. <laughs> okay, so which one is the lie? Uh, the almost getting fired at it. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about pro ball for a second. Okay. Give me more details behind that. Look, I um, it was so random, right? I was there to, to launch this company, uh-huh. and I've been playing basketball like all my life. And okay. It. And just was looking for a place to just play some pickup ball. I rolled into this gym and um, and played and played well one day. And the coach was there, and I was actually playing with his team. They just had like an open gym situation. Okay. And then just randomly, they were like, "Yo, do you, you know, do you think you can do this?" And it worked out because the practices were in the evenings from like eight to ten at night um and then the games were on the weekends okay so it gave me a chance to see like um england right okay they would go up and down um to different different cities over the weekends to play these games and it didn't interfere with my with my work so it was just it was just a random thing that that happened and um yeah i had a lot of fun with it that is so funny and you said you almost got fired which was not that was not true so what was the other one I almost failed out of uh, business school. Tell me about that. Yeah, so this is crazy. So um, I, I was in business school uh, 2009 to, to 11, right? And mm-hmm. 2009 was the year of the swine flu. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I'm curious. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I was fortunate enough to catch it, of course. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, and I'm dead serious. Oh, my um, God. And, okay. And, and uh, this was during the, you know, my first semester, which is like the core, the hardest part of your MBA um, in, in terms of classes anyway. And I, so the, the semester split up into two seven week periods. Mm-hmm. essentially. And so for uh, one of those periods, I missed five weeks of school. Oh my God. Well, you had swine flu. Were you not quarantined? I was. Did you have a that doctor's was, note? That was the problem. <laughs> Well, you still, I mean, you still had to take the test. You still had to, to do whatever. So I think that's a viable excuse, though. Like, you're dying. True, true. So, yeah, they, I mean, they, they gave me an opportunity to, to, to fix it. Right? Okay. Uh, so I ended up, um, I, I, I didn't fail the class. It was finance. I didn't fail it. Um, okay. I actually, like, squeaked out, like, a C or whatever. But um, I think the minimum for a core class is like a B. Okay. Uh, so what they said was, all right, look, um, we understand the situation. It was, it was kind of um, a bad situation and one that was outside of your control. So you can, you can keep going, and but you got to take this class again with the re- with you know a full load on top of a full load. Okay. On top of running the venture fund, um, on top of blah blah blah. I did a lot while I was in business school. Okay. So I did it again. I got an A. Um, so all right, I out. see you. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So, how can people get in contact with you? Um, best way is Twitter. Okay. So Marlon at Marlon C Nichols. Is Perfect. The best way. Like a lot of people reach out on LinkedIn, but it gets so noisy that mm. I don't even look at the the requests anymore. Okay. So the best thing is to just like let's have a conversation on Twitter, and if it makes sense, we'll. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for coming out. We yeah. really appreciate you. It's Marlon Nichols of Cross Culture Ventures with BE The Code. Dope. Thanks for having me. No problem.